Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to have an oral presentation and the SAGES meeting. So I'm, my name is Diego. I'm from Brazil. I'm a PGY2 resident, general surgery resident. And today I'm going to talk about our small uh, research using acupuncture, auricular acupuncture, uh, in the management of nausea and vomiting after uh, laparoscopic cholestectomies. Uh, the Asians are more familiarized with this acupuncture than we are. We have no conflicts of interest. So postoperative nausea and vomiting is the most frequent complication reported by 20 to 70% of patients after a surgical procedure. So laparoscopic cholestectomy is among the surgeries that present high incidence of nausea and vomiting. And we looked for some studies that analyzed the use of auricular acupuncture for the control of nausea and vomiting, but we just found like serectomies or laparoscopic gynecologic surgery or open abdominal surgery or open cholestectomies. And the studies that we found were basically uh, from Asian institutions. So the purpose of our study is to investigate this efficacy in the prevention of nausea and vomiting immediately after a complicated laparoscopic cholestectomy. So it's a single center study, randomized perspective, double blind, interventional, and we have a clinical trial number in our Brazilian uh, clinical uh, registries or something like that. So we only had female patients, 68 patients, between December 2014 and September 2015, uh, between 18 and 7 years old, uh, BMI under 35, and ASA classification just 1 and 2. Our exclusion criteria, uh, lab call, surgical, or aesthetic complications, duration time longer than 90 minutes, uh, preoperative nausea and vomiting, patient ASA 3 and above, use of antimatic 12, 12 hours before the procedure, continuous use of analgesics for corticoids, and history of substance abuse. So our technical procedures, uh, the patients who fit the criteria, we are instructed with the use of an analogic vivo scale, uh, used to measure nausea intensity. This is one of the limitations of, of our study. I'm gonna address this late, later. So they were codified and randomly allocated in two groups. We're using a computer program. So the grade of nausea, we basically use the analogic uh, visual scale for patients. You know, we are an uh, undeveloped country, and we are in a university hospital with poor people that sometimes don't understand even this scale. So it's one of our limitations, too, because it's a very subjective uh, symptom. So both groups underwent sedation with midazolam 30 minutes before the surgery. They were monitored through the saturated oxygen saturation. And we use it, we hired a professional specialized in acupuncture because our hospital does not have, but other university hospitals have one. So we basically put some needles in the, in the patients. They stay with the needles for 20 minutes and then the needles were removed. We had some medical students that help us. And so all the patients, independent if they were in the control group, or if they actually uh, had those uh, needles, we taped their ears. So anyone, nobody uh, would know if they, they really uh, were with the needles or not. So the anesthesiologist, patient, surgeon were unaware of the study group in which the patient belongs. We had more than one surgeon doing this, more than one anesthesiologist uh, in, our, in our study. So those are the auricular sites. I'm not a specialist in acupuncture. I have no idea. It's just to illustrate. I have an image which is so much better than that, uh, where we put the, the needles. So there is a mystical uh, interpretation for this, the question of yin and yang, well, and that I'm not good with that, but and also some kind of neurological stimulation that would uh, explain better why this work or not. But so every patient had the same kind of protocol for anesthesia. 
with propofol, fentanyl, ropuronium, cefavalin, dipron that we have in Brazil, we don't have in the US, uh, and other uh, drugs. And also a multimodal protocol for pain manage management. We didn't use opioids. We know that is a side effect of opioids to cause nausea and vomiting. So we had a blind researcher at time zero after our track of extubation, time two hours, four and six, usually a medical student. And we used this analogic visual scale that I showed you uh, for nausea intensity. And, uh, and we, we assessed if the, this would be necessary for patients according to this uh, scale. So we did performed a statistical analysis uh, with Fisher and student T test or man Whitney U test. So a significant level of 5% was considered for analysis. So our results. So here's just demographics. Uh, all the demographic data had no uh, statistical significance. Age, race, BMI, if they were married or not, surgery time, smoking, or previous history of nausea and vomiting before surgery. So after zero and two hours, after zero, uh, we didn't have any difference, but after two hours, you can see the control group. We had seven patients that had level five of nausea and zero uh, in the auricular acupuncture, a statistical relevant number. After four hours, we didn't have any different. The patients that were in the control group received some ondacentron, but after six hours, you can see that in the control group, seven patients had a nausea intensity of five and only one, and this was statistically relevant. This is just a review, like nausea and vomiting, the same data. And you can see that in the control group, after six hours, seven patients in nausea and vomiting, and it's statistically relevant. The limitation of our study, single center study, small study, uh, in a small university hospital, only female patients, we wanted to analyze if this, uh, the use of acupuncture had no other interference from uh, sex, from if there's smoke or not, or BMI, a uh, small population, just 68 patients, but even with a small population, we really had the statistical significance. So we also we evaluate nausea with this visual analogic scale, which is not the best one. It's from, uh, our, our patients, some of them can't even read, uh, but they were able to, to show what they were feeling with this scale. So, and another uh, limitation is that we just observe the initial six hours after the procedure. So after these six hours, we, we don't have any information. So in conclusion, it can be presumed that the acupuncture can partially prevent nausea and vomiting after uncomplicated lap calls. It may be recommended as an adjuvant therapy in selected patients, and we need uh, more studies to you know, elucidate the effect of the auricular acupuncture in this clinical context. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is my city, Recife. Uh, please visit Recife if you have the opportunity. And thank you, thank you again.